I'm Jennifer Greeson here today for Focus Washington, and we're joined by Bruce Klein, who's the Senior Vice President of Public Sector for Cisco. Bruce, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Jennifer. Bruce, we're talking about the environment, um, right. specifically how we can use technology to manage environmental and energy challenges. Mm -hmm. And with the federal and state and local governments being the largest real estate owners uh, in the United States, there's a lot of consumption that goes on in those buildings. Right. So what can technology do? How can technology play a role in helping the government manage those uh, environmental challenges? Well, great question, a great opportunity. When you think about buildings and you think about smart buildings, you know, the ability to look at the various networks that are in a building mm -hmm. and consolidate them into one IP network and the advantages it, it gives you I mean, across the board, federal, state and local, education, even healthcare, mm -hmm. the customers are looking at ways to reduce their energy consumption, reduce their utility bills, and smart buildings and now the ability to take all these disparate networks, mm -hmm. put it into an IP network and be able to control things like, you know, you walk into a building and you swipe your card, your security card, mm -hmm. And that access then now automatically, because it's on one network, and that's what we, that's the capability we bring on an IP network, it can automatically turn the lights on in your office, turn the phones on in your mm -hmm. office, can kind of manage the energy, and when you leave, it can automatically turn off the lights. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not only that, but also for the folks that are managing the buildings, when they're looking at doing maintenance on any of the pieces of equipment, you can now, through the IP network, manage when you need to do maintenance on various pieces of equipment so your buildings run more efficiently. That's the benefit of having a smart building. So it sounds like there's real intelligence built in that gives property owners the ability to control heating, cooling, um, even powering up phones or PCs yes. um, for a big impact yes. when used in mass. Do you have some customers who are doing this now? Yeah, a great example is in the state of Missouri. So the state of Missouri uh, had 3,800 buildings each were individually managed before, and we worked with them on creating a whole smart building architecture. Mm -hmm. And this was not only looking at the utilities, but also their boilers and chillers and lighting. And we uh, came up with that architecture and implemented it. And this, in the state of Missouri, after they've gone through this and now worked it for a year, they saw the utility bills drop by 18%. And what they told us is that they're saving $100,000 of cost on each building. That's real money off their bottom line. That's real money. And for states that are trying to do more with less, that's important. Exactly. What about universities? They have a lot of large buildings, a lot of large campuses, I imagine. This is probably of interest to them as well. Yeah. We have another good example in, uh, in Florida, in Naples, mm -hmm. Florida. Ave Maria University, they were looking at building out their campus, and instead of running new wires and cabling to all these uh, what typically was isolated building systems, right. They're using the smart building concept and architecture. They saved over a million dollars in, in cabling and wires. And they're also coming back and saying they're estimating a cost savings of $600,000 from utility usage. So it's a, you know, not only yeah. energy, right. but major cost savings right. that they can put into something put else. Back into something else. Exactly. Well, it sounds like a win-win. It is. Um, doing more with less and helping the environment. Yep. Great. Well, thanks, Bruce. Thank you Good for too. joining us today. Good to have you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.